chairman, Dr. Sepulveda. Welcome, sir. Welcome ad addressed by the chairman, Delta State Board of Internal Revenue, at the sensitization and awareness seminar on the voluntary assets and income declaration scheme, VEX, holding on Thursday, 28 September 2017, at Grand Hotel at Southern, organized by the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Nigeria, Asaba and District, in collaboration with Federal Ministry of Finance, JTB and PWC Protocol. It gives me great pleasure to personally welcome you all to this seminar. May I say thank you to the organizers for the initiative, especially for the choice of Delta State as the rally point for the South and Eastern region sensitization, for the vision and foresightedness to convey this seminar at this time. My dear professional colleagues and co-participants, at this official time, we have convened here the first of its kind for us in this region to, among other things, take a major look at the voluntary assets and income declaration scheme there recently introduced by the federal government in a bid to entrench efficiency in our collective tax collection system as well as diversify, in a sense, the revenue base of the various states and the federation. As you may be aware, the base was created by a presidential order targeted at encouraging voluntary filing of tax returns and payment of tax in line with the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And to invite your attention to the fact that in some quarters it is not so clear what rate is or is or is not. And that necessitated the seminar which is aimed at making the necessary clarification to key stakeholders in what could be described as vague implementation chain. For instance, VAID is viewed by so many as a requirement by the Code of Conduct Bureau, CCB, since the World Access Declaration have been more associated with CCB in recent time. The implication being that tax awareness and indeed the awareness of what our civic responsibility is with regard to tax compliance is very low. This situation underscores the need for the scheme and consequently this sensitization. So, if the sensitization of this type is not carried out, we might just as well slip into one of these two types of error. There is one, those who might be affected one way or the other during the enforcement of compliance stage may have crossed over the scheme thinking it is not meant for them. Two, resulting from a poor perception of the scheme, view it as a new law drafted to win short task payers. Three, I personally attach great importance to this seminar because right before me is a gathering of professionals from the bar, through the bench, to the collector, and the taskman. This seminar is important to you, your clients, those you serve in your capacities at work, and those you truly care for. It is for us all a priceless opportunity to openly and frankly discuss issues and consign, seek clarification, establish contact for possible future follow through with a view to advance and deepen college collaborations, support system, and involve a better synergy which shall impact tax compliance in your various states as well as keep your clients from trouble. We shall be taking through the seminar by able facilities of PricewaterhouseCoopers, PwC, which have been working closely with the federal government from the conception of the X. May I reiterate at this point that I'm confident that they shall bring their best ideas to our discussions here today so we can 
make a difference with how we view VAID, our work, service to our clients, our roles and responsibilities, as well as the synergy we are expected to engender as stakeholders. Let me once again welcome you to Delta State and to VEST Seminar. You are most welcome. Enjoy your time with us. Thank you. I will present it one more time. See, whether you like it or not, accountants. But there's something about accountants. Is it the one? Well, I know what I talk about now. <laughs> to listen to Vice President Brown and um, uh, it's with coffee, tea, or whatever you desire. New to sign, so let's come on stage. Student for Mr. Onuero, the resident coordinator, Data South, uh, Data State Board of Internal Revenue. Please tell us, what is the essence of this seminar? Uh, the seminar is aimed at sensitizing the public to know that there is room for voluntary you know, declaration of your tax, so that you pay your tax and not be a victim of you know, the law. When we pay our tax and declare our assets, what is that to gain? There are so many things, many benefits we stand to gain. You know, government is providing a lot of things to make sure that there's good health, you know, powers, and everything that we need in the community, in the society. The digital government to provide for government needs the resources to be able to provide all this. So, what's the level of compliance in tax and uh, payments in Delta State? Uh, so many are not complying with tax payments. And hence, this, need, the, 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 this seminar is so important to be able to go out and sensitize the people. Instead of using force, I know at the beginning, you have to you know, sensitize them of the need for them to pay their taxes. And when that is done, I'm sure people will begin to comply. So, apart from this seminar, what machinery is the Board of Internal Revenue, Delta State, doing to ensure that um, uh, the revenue uh, moves up? Yeah, there are a lot of jingles on in TV now, like in NTA, you have the issue of pay your tax that is being heard all the time. It is aimed at sensitizing the people. And in all the offices, we also go out on tax sensitization from office to office, you know, telling them, you know, preaching a gospel of taxation so that they can pay their taxes instead of using force, using you know, carrying police along to begin to chase people around. Just go to their offices, preach the gospel of tax and say, please. Pay your tax, the need for us to pay your tax and other things that is needed. You know, when you pay your tax, you, know, you have your tax clearance, you can use it for so many things. Your building plan, you know, traveling abroad and what have you. And so many other things that you need to, you know, you gain, you start to gain when you pay your tax. So this is your tax and a blanket, does it cover only just um, uh, organization workers or just both um, uh, the petty traders and uh, artisans? It covers all. And you know, there are various you know, groups that have been set up now to go and meet with the various associations to be able to sensitize them on the need for them to, for them to pay their tax. So what has been the response of Delta? Some of them are complying, but we believe that as time goes on, they will all begin to work towards ensuring that they pay their tax fully.
mercy is. We will look at the experience in other countries as well as what we have now as babes and the legal framework for it. We will run through the provisions of the executive order that was signed by the acting president on the 1st of July this year. Then we will take frequently asked questions because we know that when you hear babes, a lot of questions come up. So we will take us through some of the difficult questions. We will also look at the procedure and implementation. Now when Taiwo comes, Taiwo Yudili, he will um, expatiate. I will just touch briefly on the procedure and implementation. We will look through other questions and discuss the role of stakeholders then. We will take questions before we go on a break. Now I heard a story sometime last month. And the story is very simple. I'm in also in a country called Sweden. Sweden. Who knows where Sweden is? Europe. So in Sweden, the tax rate is 57% for individuals. Now when I hear that, my mind calls. How will you earn 100,000, for example, a month? And the government says you must pay 57% as tax. Who knows the tax rates in Nigeria, the highest band for PIC? Sorry? Sorry? Sorry, some people are saying 30. 24 percent. Whichever the answer is, we all agree that it's not as high as 57. So then the speed of UC partner who works in Sweden. I'm, I'm telling my story now. And he was filing his tax returns. And some of Nigeria said, how much you are paying all half, more than half of your salary to the government? How do you feel about it? And he says, I am happy to pay it. If I could, I would pay more. And Nigeria was like, you pay more to the government for what reason? What are they doing for you? And he says, when he was three years old, he lost his father. His father died. So his mom has to raise him. Your petroleum products has also been a problem for us. Because it seemed when it appeared that the government overlooked the other sectors of the economy and focused on taxes. Focus on petroleum products. Insecurity in other parts of the country led to a, a decrease in production of oil. Of course, the pain, mismanagement and corruption. All these things are probable causes of the recession we just came out of. Now, in the most recent budget, the government says I earn X, Y amount of money, but my expenses are way higher. So if you pick up the budget, the last budget, you will see that the budget is running on a 2.36 billion naira deficit. That means the government is spending more than it's earning. So where is it going to get this excess from? On the other hand, the government has said it will not increase taxes. Why? Because people are already paying enough taxes for what they are getting. So the idea is, okay, let's see if we can expand the tax set rather than increasing taxes. Do we think that's fair? Yeah, personally, I think it's fair. I mean, you cannot overburden people, right, with what they are getting now. So government says, let's try to broaden the tax set, bring more people, bring more companies, and make more money from taxes. So it is not a surprise that the focus is shifting from petroleum products to other sources of revenue, such as taxes. And let's not forget that when government has this budget deficit, what is it currently doing? It's borrowing money. Borrowing money at extraordinarily high interest rates. Now, you don't need to be a mathematician or you don't need to be Albert Einstein. So know that if you continue to spend more than you earn, what will eventually happen? High blood pressure, somebody says. Somebody says recession. Somebody says crash. So we know and we agree that it is not sustainable to continue to spend more than you earn. Now these are some of the backgrounds to what we call the But we'll see more as we proceed.
Now, recent statistics tell us that Nigeria's tax to GDP ratio is one of the lowest in the world. It's not the lowest, but it's one of the lowest. It stands at 6%. Essentially, what is this big grammar, tax to GDP ratio? In essence, the contribution of tax to the amount of money government earns is extremely low. And some of the reasons are not far-fetched. We have said so earlier because government has been focusing on revenue from crude, so government has overlooked taxes as a source of revenue. Now, sorry, sir. Six Can we see the board from behind? Okay, there's, a, there's another screen there. How many, how many companies did compared to the whole of Nigeria? So if you look at the board, we see different tax delivery. For those of you who can't see at the back, there are spaces in front. If you can come forward, I'm sure there are enough spaces. There's an empty table of Congo 5.9. We have Iran and we have Kuwait. Now, can we see any similarities in these countries with Nigeria? Who can tell us? Correct. Many of them are oil producing countries. Them are also world torn countries. Failing economies. Now, if we look at the second table, we, where we have some of the highest tax to GDP ratios globally, we can tell the clear difference. I'd mentioned Sweden earlier on. Sweden is 50%. So it's, we can say 50% of government revenues arguably comes from taxes. <clears throat> Look at Canada. Canada is 39. I have like over 20 friends who say they are relocated to Canada. And it's because of things like this. Belgium, 47. The average in the EU is 35. And if we look at these countries, Australia, Belgium, Canada, Denmark, EU, Finland, Sweden, one thing runs through. They are all working economies. The people are politically alive and awake. People pay taxes there, and for that reason, they can challenge governance and governments. I'm paying my taxes, why am I not getting this? I'm paying my taxes, why can't this be working? These are examples of countries Nigeria wants to get to. True or false? True. True or false? True. False. Now, this is not a political rally. Now, when we look at other countries in Africa, we see that Nigeria also falls short. Algeria, 7.7, .7, slightly higher than us, also an oil producing country. Angola 5.7, Benin Republic is 15.4, Chad and oil basin 4.2, Botswana, Burundi, Cameroon all have higher tax to GDP ratio rates. So that tells you, even in Africa and by all standards, Nigeria is one of the lowest. Now, on the 1st of July, when the Vice President introduced the VAIDs, he read, and I'm quoting, he says, 214 people, only 214 people paid personal income taxes in excess of 20 million, and all of them were residents in Lagos. Now, let's cast our mind to that statement again. So, are we saying in the whole of the 36 states in Nigeria, plus the Federal Capital Territory, we have only 20 high net worth individuals. Don't forget, Nigeria is a country of over more than 70 million. Are we saying it's only 214 that are high net worth individuals? Now, these are statistics showing that the compliance rate is very low. People earn much more than they pay taxes. Only last week, many people are not paying taxes, but they are enjoying the benefits of the infrastructure by the world. The United Nations 
the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, that is the OECD, and others have started introducing. You enter your car, you, you enter the bus, or you trek to the markets, through of course, businesses, where they do trading, buying, and selling. Now, we are not saying they are not paying their fair share of taxes. We are not saying it's now more difficult to track who is paying tax in a share across. I don't have a situation. So, big on tax avoidance going on, group stand together and fight tax evasion and tax avoidance. Convention on multilateral administrative assistance and tax. We would collaborate, we would share information in this agreement. So, Nigeria, based on this agreement, I need information of XYZ of my citizens who are hiding assets and income in America sent to us. Legal framework. What is called the fast card, where the Americans require the governments of all the countries in the world to common reporting standards. And go to any country who has also signed it to say, oh, I need this share information with me. So the Nigerian government of taxpayers who have been defaulted, I just said it. Last of these data frameworks to get. Now, if you look at section 24, I'll read what it says. It says, it shall be the duty of every doubt that the Constitution requires is in chapter 2, the, the, the section, the, the part of the Constitution on the part of the government and the part of citizens. Now, by the introduction of this, one of the objectives is to increase the tax base as well. Grants immunity from prosecuting that have not been paid their taxes by fiscal. Faith also wants to. So sometime last year, the Federal Indian Revenue Service now have mentioned tax targets. So, <laughs> so exactly, I was going to say that. So basically, an amnesty means you have sinned, but I will not punish you. Go and sin no more. That's what the government is saying. So the government is not interested in punishing people who have not paid their fair share of taxes. It's saying, okay, come forward. You are like a prodigal son. I've accepted you. Give me your information. Pay the right amount of taxes. Disclose and go home. And we've said why. There's a potential to increase revenue, get quick cash, reduce finance costs for government, and let the offenders come free and disclose voluntarily. So those are some of the arguments against tax amnesties. And they are valid arguments. Do we agree? They are valid arguments. But on the flip side, on the reverse, there are also arguments in support of tax amnesty. It increases revenue in the short term. It encourages people who have hidden money abroad to bring them back in. And then it increases public awareness. Now, I'm very passionate about this part. Public awareness. When a citizenry is compliance, largely compliance in tax matters, they have the moral obligation to challenge government. It widens our tax debts. It saves government resources on administration because government is not chasing people. It's not prosecuting. It's saying come forward. So there are a lot of savings for tax amnesty. So let's look at the success or otherwise of FRS tax amnesty in 2016. The terms of that particular amnesty was that paid principal sum. We will not collect interest, we will not collect penalty. But before you are eligible, you must pay 25% of the principal sum. Now, the records from FRS tell us that 2,700 companies came forward to participate in the scheme. Now, that number may not be astronomical, but if you ask me, I'll say it's quite encouraging. If 2,700 companies came forward 
to rectify one tax default or the other. And, and let's not forget, this was only for a, a six month period and was not a full amnesty. So, government says it raised 27 billion naira in that short period. And this 27 billion naira represents only the 25% down payment. One of the, the, the forms of this particular mercy was when you pay 25%, you are allowed to pay the balance in installments. So this 27 billion does not represent installments, it represents the initial 25%, which I think is encouraging. Now the last communication I had with FRS, they say 40 billion would be recovered from this amnesty program. Is this some money? Yes, it is. Now let's look at the experience in other countries. As I've said, tax avoidance, tax evasion is not peculiar to Nigeria. No compliance tax rate is not peculiar to Nigeria. Other countries have experienced similar. Many countries like South Africa, Indonesia, India, Turkey have all at some point or the other introduced a form of tax amnesty or the other. Now because tax amnesty is based on government policies, there's no one size fits all. It also depends on the government's objectives. So the objectives may be to get foreign assets reflected in Nigeria. Other, other objectives may, may be to repatriate money into Nigeria. So it all depends. And all these countries have had one form of amnesty or the other. Now, if you remember, we had said there are some challenges. People have argued that tax amnesty is bad that you are going to encourage people to not pay tax and let them go scot free. Now, in some of these countries, people have actually challenged their governments for instituting tax amnesty. And we've heard similar arguments in Nigeria as well. In Indonesia to be particular, the case went all the way to the highest courts. And the court was faced with the question of, is a tax amnesty illegal? Is it bad for government to introduce a tax amnesty? Now, of course, the courts, when faced with this kind of question, would weigh the public interest against the question before it. And the courts found very, very good reasons to say that the objective of a tax amnesty are very good. And at the end, you benefits the public as a whole. So the court found that tax amnesties are noble objectives insofar as they are for the public good and not to benefit isolated persons or particular persons. Now this table just shows a list of some of these countries, their amnesty programs and how much they made. So South Africa, for example, had the goal of raising 600 billion rand. Did it achieve that? No, it did not. It managed to raise 3.8 billion. It had less than 1,000 people come forward. So we, we, we might say it's not a 100% success. But the other countries, Italy, for example, had a goal of 3.8 billion euro. But it raised more. It raised 4 billion. Indonesia has been recorded as the highest or the most successful tax amnesty program. Other countries, India and Turkey, have also successfully run amnesty programs. So it's not picking at Nigeria. These are global trends and Nigeria has jumped on the bandwagon. Now let's look at what we have at home currently. Vid. So what is this bid thing all about safe? Waiting the bid safe. How many of us have heard the programs, the jingles on radio? Have we heard any on radio? Waiting the this bid thing safe. So it's voluntary assets and income declaration scheme. Now we'll look at it and its framework. So as I said earlier on, the VAIS was introduced by an executive order. 
And the summary of this law is that if you are a tax defaulter, you've not paid your taxes as you should have, come forward, come and declare your tax liabilities unpaid. If you have assets that generate income for, for you and you've not paid taxes, come and disclose those incomes or those assets. If you have assets abroad, you make money from such assets and you don't pay taxes on them, come and declare. So essentially it's saying if you have hidden money, hidden assets, bring them forward. That is the gist of the Ahmed the, the Bates program. So it's a nine month program from running from the first of July to March 2018. So at this point, we expect that individuals, our clients, will be making inquiries or will be telling them, oh, you have this opportunity, come forward. As PwC, we've had clients come to us and say, oh, we've seen this initiative. We have not been totally open with our tax affairs. We want to come forward on that base. And we are currently assisting some of them come forward. And all states are also involved. Now, this does not contravene any existing laws. The other existing laws. Now, and we know lawyers, lawyers can be very, very interesting persons. I'm a lawyer myself, so please don't take offense. So they can come up to challenge and say, this bill said, to the extent that it will be compliance with all existing tax laws. And I'll take us through some of the provisions on which the bill stands on in law. Read this provision so we can all get them clearly. The president may remit wholly or in part any tax. But at the end of the day, this money end up in private pockets. And you travel from here to Abuja, the roads are not there. The path is not working. Uh, security is not there. But these things are not, are not happening in Australia. So they use their money to develop. And the irony of it all is that we carry this money and go and put it in Sweden's account. Why the reverse is not the case here? So, a good idea, but how will it work in Nigeria? I am not aware of any president, vice president, including our prophet, who have declared their asset so that they can pay tax, including governments, commissioners, local governments. So it appears that this badge uh, is meant for the ordinary man. Nine years, 200 pounds. So, please, more questions. I have another one. AP Magnetism, Secretary, Nigeria Association, and Saba Branch. I so much want this to fly. I want it to work. But I have a constraint. I'm scared. You see, it's all about the Nigerian masses. That is what this is for. One. Two, the Nigerian people have been battered, have been beaten. When you were saying something, you said we, uh, we will not have excuse or we have access to government to ask them. Our government don't need us to ask them anything. They don't care. Whatever we ask them is irrelevant, whether we are right or wrong. They go about to do what they want to do. So, on the part of the populace, we are already scared. Nobody is coming out. It's because of the mindset that has been there. The minute Nigerians are not difficult to please for crying out loud, the minute we can post off shelter, feeding, and accommodation, everything will fall into place. The day we get that right, we come out to declare. If we don't, no, people get scared. You made an analogy of Sweden. Yes, did you equally ask them how much they are paid? If I pay 10 million in a month in Nigeria, 
and we give 60%. <laughs> I'll give 60%. But if as a private practitioner, I cannot post on 500,000 in a month, you expect me to pay 20%. Where I use that 20% to maintain my car because of bad roads and generator. But now we can attest to the fact that the life situation in Asaba, I don't know of Lagos, I don't know of Uganda, in Asaba has improved. Kudos to them. So, what am I saying? The Nigerian populace have to have confidence in the government and its plan. They failed us for the past, we are celebrating independence. A few days from now, I don't know of that independence. I don't know if you know. Thank you very much. Concentrating its implementation. I'll take the other for example. The Delta State Tax Board does not encourage what you are talking about to come and declare your income, fill a form and submit and pay according to your ability. They don't encourage that. What they do is that they set a target. I think the government purposely inaugurated a tax management team or something, which was given a mandate, kind of um, a target. This is how much you are going to change. So they don't care. If you go to pay your tax, they don't care how much you make. Whether you're two years at the bar, talking as a, as a lawyer, whether you're two years at the bar, lawyers pay so much, engineers pay this, bank officials pay that. They are not interested in how much you make. So I don't know how you're going to reconcile this with what they do in practice. Another thing is this. In Delta City here, 